going to be taking a look at chapter 28 of school from Miss Donnelly's perspective. So grab your book and open up to chapter 28, page 186. It's a pretty quick chapter. So let's see what Miss Donnelly has to say. Chapter 28, Mrs. Donnelly. Well, of course I was worried. It was only her first full day of a, as a licensed driver and she'd been gone for three hours. I'd moved past the anger stage. I was no longer even miffed about being stranded at home without transportation. I was already making deals. If Sophie comes home in one piece, I won't strangle her or even ground her. Please, please let her be okay. To take my mind off the anxiety, I was cleaning out the spare room where Cap had lived for two months. I have to say he was the tidiest person in the house, as opposed to Sophie, who used the floor as a display rack for her clothing choices. I couldn't find so much as a speck of dust that had come from Cap. As for clutter, the boy had nothing, so he couldn't possibly leave it lying around. There were a few pieces of schoolwork. One was an essay entitled, The Most Important Invention of the 20th Century. What had Cap chosen to write about? The telephone? The computer? No, duct tape. In spite of my nervousness, I couldn't contain a chuckle. I remembered Garland where duct tape had served every purpose but food. In fact, my sweep netted only one other item, a slip of paper neatly fo folded in the nightstand drawer. One effervescent bangle, multicolor stones, engraving, all you need is love. My heart turned over in my chest. Sophie's bangle? It was from Cap? He had that much of a crush on her? No, he pretended it was a gift from Bill. In my job, I knew that was pure kindness with no strings attached. It was pretty rare. The boy was an angel. Whatever problems I had with Rain, I had to admit that she'd raised a truly wonderful kid. I stared at the scroll at the bottom of the receipt, paid by check. Oh no. I remembered the school's bank statement, the check to the jewelry store. In his innocence, Cap had purchased Sophie's bracelet with money from the student activity fund. I raced to the phone and dialed Frank Kasigi. He wasn't picking up, so I tried his cell. What? barked the assistant principal in a very hairy tone. It's Flora Donnelly, Frank. I found out about the check cap route to the jewelry store. Never mind that, he snapped. Meet me at the school. There's some kind of riot going on. I was alarmed. Because you canceled the Halloween dance? I don't think so. My custodian called me. The parking lot is full of kids with candles. They told him it's a memorial service for Cap Anderson? I was thunderstruck. A memorial service? Cap isn't dead? Well, you seem to be the only one who knows that. That's why I need you there. You're the closest thing to family he has in this town. Maybe you can convince everybody. I can't get to the school, I protested. Sophie has the car. Sit tight. I'll pick you up in five minutes. My hands were shaking as I hung up the phone. Sophie, AWOL, the school in turmoil, rumors, Cap was dead. What was going on here? Things are always a little crazy at Sea Average Middle School. So I hope you enjoyed that chapter. It's pretty brief. Miss Donnelly's headed to the school, Sophie's at the school, Cap's at the school, you and Zach and all the students seem to be at the school. Can't wait to see what happens when everybody else arrives. All right, you guys, take care. I'll see you soon.